Hello and welcome to the Penguin Prof channel for educators. Today I want to talk about how I make my YouTube videos. This is one of my most requested videos. So here we go. I'm going to talk about how to design and plan and produce your videos. I'm going to show you what I use in terms of my setup. Uh, give you a little tour of my recording space and I have a few final tips. So let's get started. Step one, just like everything else, planning. Uh, the first thing that I do is figure out what the purpose of my video is. And I have kind of three categories of videos that I make. Uh, sometimes the videos are there as a preview. So it gets my students ready for the topic. Um, you know, I like to pose questions or show problems, things like that. Some videos are really lectures, so if you are flipping your classroom or you're teaching online, this would be the video that is the main content source. And some videos I call diving deeper, extra topics, after the lecture or the lab or the activity or whatever, um, something, you know, something more. In terms of the design, I have three categories as well. Most of my videos are combinations of all three, but um, there's the screen capture, and that's when you have slides on your computer, and then you record audio uh, as you go through them. That's what I'm doing right now. Tablet is when you use a tablet and you record your drawings uh, on the computer. You can think about Khan Academy, right? That's sort of the classic tablet design. And then a video of yourself. So, uh, for example, with a camera or a video camera, you record yourself uh, either with or without slides. You can do this uh, with a green screen so you can remove the background if you want to go a little bit higher tech. Um, there's lots you can do there. That generally adds a lot, though, on the post-production side. So I always storyboard. I write out what I'm going to be doing. Um, for some reason, I like to write it instead of type it, but I do write on a tablet on my computer. Sometimes I script and sometimes I don't. I'm generally not a scripter, but some people, it makes them much more comfortable to write out exactly what they're going to say. That's really up to you, of course. And watch your timing. Time yourself. See how long it actually is going to take you to get through the material. In terms of producing videos, I want to show you what I use um, in terms of hardware and software and so on. I want to say this is not a sponsored video. At a basic level, what you're going to need is a computer, although nowadays you can actually do some screen capture with a tablet. Um, but I think a computer is probably the best choice. You're going to need a microphone. You're going to need some sort of software to capture all of this, and you're going to need to share it. Not necessarily on YouTube, but YouTube is certainly the most popular. Um, but you can use Vimeo. You can use Blackboard. Um, but you got to put it somewhere so people can access it, obviously. In terms of a computer, I use an iMac. I got an iMac in late 2010. I have also used uh, PCs, but... Um, this just works best for my needs right now. Microphones, uh, I have several. I really like microphones by Blue. This is the Blue Yeti. There is a new one that just came out called Nessie. Um, they make just excellent microphones. Um, I also use a boom stand and a pop filter. And uh, pop filters protect the microphone from plosives. You really want to watch out for these. Uh, plosives happen when sounds, certain sounds, uh, explode from your mouth because of stopping uh, the air with your lips or your tongue. If you don't have something to protect the microphone against plosives, things like Penguin Prof will sound absolutely terrible. If you don't want to go high tech on this, you can use, I mean, I used this for years. This is a leg warmer. Um, and, and it works great. On smaller microphones, I've used um, stockings, you know, like nylon stockings. Anything to kind of break that plosive effect on your microphone, it will make a huge difference. Try it out and you'll see. You're going to need some headphones. All of your sort of mid to high end microphones will have a headphone jack and that allows you to monitor your audio while you are recording. Now this is one of those items that I won. 
Uh, oh, I also won the Blue Yeti microphone, by the way, but I had already purchased one myself, so that kind of falls in both categories. Anyway, I, I won these, and uh, they're they're pretty awesome. I think they're overkill for what I do, but uh, any any decent, you know, headset that allows you to monitor yourself is is fine. Some other microphones in my arsenal, the Samson Go mic was really the first uh, external mic I ever bought. It's very small. I still use it when I'm on the go. So when I do recordings with my iPad, for example, I use that. And the Audio Technica is really low priced, great lavalier microphone. So you wear it with a clip and uh, I, I think it produces great sound for the money. If you want a camera, uh, you can go with pretty much any HD uh, video camera. They're, they've just come down so much in price. I use my, my Canon when I do you know, video capture of myself with, uh, with the green screen. I also have this little guy, the Ipivo Point to View. I don't use that really often, but I do really like it. It allows me to do things like I've used it for stop motion. I've used it to uh, capture very, very small things. Um, it's just kind of fun. It's certainly not necessary, but depending upon what you're doing, you might want to check it out. I also upgraded my webcam. I got a Logitech C920 recently, and I really, really like it. Um, you, you can use this for all of your video capture, but I use it especially for virtual office hours and, and things like that. I just needed a better webcam than the iSight camera that comes with the iMac. This is the tablet that I use. It's a bamboo, it's called a bamboo tablet, and when I do on-screen writing, you know, solving problems, if you look at like my solving genetics problems, um, things like that, some things just look better if you're writing, and uh, this is what I use for that. I'm very, very happy with it. It's a great product. And I got a, a kit for my green screen setup, and you'll see that in the tour. But the kit came with the fabric, the stand, and the lighting. And, um, you know, again, this is totally optional, but this gave me a lot of flexibility with the kinds of videos that I could make. And quite frankly, it's really fun. So it might be something to, to look into. In terms of software, at a bare minimum, you're going to need something to show your slides. Uh, if you're a Mac person, you have Keynote. If you are PC, you're using probably PowerPoint. And if you're an educator, I'm sure you're familiar with those. And then the two big players for screen capture software, which allow you to capture and edit and export your files, um, include Camtasia, which is what I use, Camtasia for Mac 2.0. Uh, and ScreenFlow. ScreenFlow is, uh, I'm, I've heard, it's also excellent. I've just never used it. Other kinds of things that I use, I use uh, OmniDazzle. It's really cheap. It's a couple bucks that allows you to have really cool effects on your screen, like uh, spotlights and things like that. Sketchbook Pro is what I use for, for drawing. I make a lot of my own images. I'm no artist, but, you know, I need to make my, my cartoons. Backdrop is just a cool little app that allows you to cover your desktop if you're doing, like, partial windows and things like that on your screen. I use Jing. This is a TechSmith product. It's just really handy to capture all kinds of things, images, video, and it's free. Clarify allows you to make really great instructional documents and PDFs, and sometimes they end up in my videos. MindNode, and there's a light version as well. It's just mind mapping uh, software, which is really cool for video sometimes. So basically the steps that you take, it's pretty straightforward. You prepare your slides, all your animations, then you're going to record and edit in your either Camtasia or ScreenFlow or your recorder of choice. And uh, then you upload. Um, uploading to YouTube, you're going to have to get a YouTube account and you follow the instructions and it's pretty straightforward. And then you're live. So I want to show you a quick video tour of my studio. So this is my setup when I do recordings. Um, this is what I see. Uh, here's my computer, obviously. And uh, I'm facing the lights and the microphone. And uh, this mic, the Blue Yeti, which is really my favorite mic at the moment, um, comes uh, with a stand. But I also like to use this boom stand, which I can adjust. Um, and I can put it you know, just off the view of the camera. You know, For different applications, you'll find that different microphone setups will work better for you. But like I said, I love this mic. I love these lights. They're obviously off right now, because otherwise uh, I would blind you. And uh, then behind me, that's where I keep all of my uh, extra microphones and cables and all of my extra tech gear is in that uh, little Alex drawer from Ikea. 
And behind me, this is my green screen. And um, this came with a kit and it actually came with a stand, a big post metal thing you put together. And it took me about half an hour to put it together every time I used it. So I got this wire, it's a tension wire from Ikea. And uh, it comes with hooks and stuff. And you're, I think you're supposed to put like photos on it or something, but it's great for green screen. Let me back up a little bit so you can see. And um, this is a really good size screen and I have uh, tons of room back here to hang it and uh, it takes me now about a minute to uh, to hang it and uh, get ready to go and you can see sort of the orientation of everything from here so here's the green screen here are the lights which I can adjust really easily uh, you really just want to make sure that you don't see any uh, extra wrinkles keep that green screen uh, free of wrinkles. Uh, you actually want to iron it. I know it's one of the few things that I iron. <laughs> but uh, anyway, you don't want to have any uh, creases because that makes the color more difficult to remove later. And then uh, here I have my tripod and obviously I'm using one of my cameras right now, but this is the Logitech webcam, um, which I which I really like as well. So this is kind of the view from the camera angle. And um, this is uh, a really, really nice setup and uh, I have plenty of room to work in and I will uh, mention something about sound here in just a second. Okay, so one more thing that I want to mention here is sound and I cleared uh, the tripods and stuff out of the way so you can see. Um, I built this studio and office as an addition and it's a sunroom actually and it has uh, all windows here. When I'm recording, I close all of these blinds, which I purchased for sound absorbing properties. Also, I think they're really pretty. Um, the, the gradient is for aesthetics, but the material that I selected is sound absorbing. And uh, I also have this rug here. Basically, uh, any kind of fabric that you have will absorb sound. It's just, it's really, really critical. Uh, especially if you're in, a, you're in a room of this size. I also want to mention that uh, the green screen itself absorbs sound. So even when I'm not doing a video capture in a green screen, I still throw it up here. Uh, you can use a blanket. Any kind of fabric that you have behind your head is absolutely essential to absorb sound and avoid uh, bouncing of sound waves. Um, I'll show you this. This is an interior window and everybody thought it was very strange to put blinds on an interior window, but uh, that's to absorb the sound as well. I just, I couldn't have a window here. So I used the same fabric, I just chose a white color so that it blends in with the wall. But uh, all of your decisions about how you set up your room, you know, you're thinking about uh, light and sound. All right, so a couple of final comments here. I gotta talk about money because if I don't, comments are gonna be filled with questions about it. Don't do this for the money. Yes, there's ads all over the place saying, oh, you can find your fortune on YouTube, but if money is motivating you, it's, it's not gonna work. But yes, you can make money. There are different ways to make money on your channel. You can monetize your channel. Uh, you can make sponsored videos, and if you if you Google either of those, you'll get all kinds of information uh, how to do that. I know what you really want to know. What you really want to know is, uh, do I make money? Does the Penguin Prof make money? And the answer is yes, I do. My channel has been monetized since June of 2012, and I asked my students if they would prefer buying materials that I made from a publisher. I was working with a publisher, you know, doing, you know, the standard thing. It was, um, you know, web-based or DVD-based, or if they would mind watching ad-supported videos on YouTube. And you can imagine uh, that was kind of a non-question. And so I've been doing YouTube ever since. All the money that I make, I put back into the channel. And that's actually how I buy all of the hardware and software and peripherals that I get. Um, I... I buy them from money that I make on YouTube. Finally, I want to give you some, some last thoughts. You know, you want to keep your goals in mind as you design and produce your videos. Who is your audience? What do they want and what do they need? Of course, those wants and needs may or may not be the same thing. I would say, you know, seek advice. So obviously you're watching this video because you're looking for advice and advice is great and I would watch other YouTubers and see what they do, but it's really important to find your own voice and your own style. Just like teaching, you have to find your own path. So, you know, look out there, see what people are doing, but you've got to be comfortable uh, with your own style in order for your videos to really ring true with people.
I would finally say, you know, have fun and experiment and get your stuff out there. And, you know, I've been on YouTube for a few years now and it has been an overwhelmingly positive experience. And the comments that I get from people all over the world are just so inspiring. So give it a go. It's, it's, it's pretty cool out there. As always, thank you so much for visiting the Penguin Prof channel. Please show your support. Here we go. Click those buttons, like, share, and subscribe. See, that's how you make the money. <laughs> Visit on Facebook. Follow on Twitter. Good luck.